Good morning. Jesus' last words to his disciples were, go and make disciples of all nations. That wasn't a suggestion. It was a command, go and make disciples. So let's talk a little bit about what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. A disciple of Jesus is someone who has a personal relationship with Christ. You probably hear us, you know, priests talking a lot about a personal relationship with Christ. What is a personal relationship with Christ? It's just like you have a relationship with someone else, your best friend, your coworker, your spouse. That's what the relationship's all about, is the same thing with the Lord. It means that seeing that Jesus is part of our daily lives, allow him to enter into our lives. Have conversations with him. Listen to him. Talk to him. Get to know him. That's what a personal relationship is. And all of us do have that relationship. The problem is we don't take time to examine our life and reflect on it. Like yesterday, where was Jesus in your life? Where was God in your life? How did he encounter God during the day yesterday? I'm sure if you sit down and think about it, you'll find ways where somehow God's presence became known to you. Being a disciple is making time for prayer, a time to be with Jesus, not just to talk to Jesus, but also to listen to Jesus. God knows everything we want. There is nothing we can tell God that God doesn't know already. So the purpose of prayer is for us to know what's God's will for us, what's God trying to tell us. A disciple is one who's willing to make a commitment to Christ, Not just say, yeah, I believe in Jesus, I believe in God, I'm a disciple. But willing to make sacrifices by changing their lives so they can be a better disciple, so they can live the commandments of love that Jesus taught us. Jesus told the disciples, go make disciples and teach them everything I commanded you. We're supposed to learn what he commanded us so we can put it into action because that's what's going to bring joy and fulfillment to our life. To take away all those distractions, all those things that keep us away from living as disciples of Jesus Christ. And sometimes that's difficult to do. That's how we share in the cross, by dying to ourselves, sacrificing those things that keeping Jesus away from us. Being committed to Jesus means making Jesus the number one priority in our life. Not one of many priorities, not number four or five or two, but the number one priority of our life, our time, our efforts, everything about us is dedicated first to Jesus. Being a disciple is being part of a community. Jesus did not call individuals. He called them as a group. He called 12 apostles. God called the whole nation of Israel to be his people. God calls us to be part of a community like we are here at Holy Family in each parish so we can worship together, so we can pray together, thank God together, so we can be nourished by the word of God, by receiving the body of Christ, by seeking reconciliation when we go to the sacrament of confession. God is about love, and commandments of God is about love, but we need some place where we can learn how to love one another the way Jesus loved us. Some place where we can practice that love, and that's why we need that community. Being a disciple of Jesus means that we study the Word of God. The disciple is someone who's a follower, someone who's a student of. How can we be students and followers of Christ if we don't know anything about Jesus. Can you talk to someone for like five minutes, tell them about the highlights of Jesus' life and his words, his teaching? If somebody asks you to talk about your family, we can go on for hours probably, or about your best friend, your coworker. But what about Jesus? What would you say about Jesus in five to ten minutes? Being open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We all have our plans, we all have what we want to do, but sometimes God maybe have a different plan for us. Are we open to the Holy Spirit to show us the way, to guide us? 
Are we willing to let go of our plan and do God's will for us? Being a disciple is about sharing our time, talents, and gifts in building God's kingdom, in helping our church to continue to be a community of true disciples, and in transforming the world. A disciple is someone who's generous with the time and talents and treasure that God blessed them with. These are the characteristics of being a disciple. But Jesus is calling the disciples to go and make disciples. That's what we call today missionary disciples, becoming missionary disciples. And to become a missionary disciple, obviously we have to be disciples first, but then we have to be willing to share our story with others. That's what the apostles did. They went out, as we're going to hear next Sunday, and began telling the world their experience of Jesus. What he said, what did they saw him, see him do, what he told them after he rose from the dead. We have our story too. And that's how we become missionary disciples, sharing that story with others and also accompanying them, walking with them as they become disciples. Just like the 12-step groups, you know, you have to be a sponsor for someone to lead them to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. You have to share your life, your experiences of Jesus. And in any parish, you know, this mission to go and make disciples is the mission of the church. Our popes in the last three, four popes have been telling us that's what we should be about of being a church, a community of missionary disciples. And that formation in any parish happens in two buildings. The church building, where we come in to be reminded of God's work in our lives and the history of his people. We come to celebrate God, to receive the word of God, to receive the body of Christ, to practice and to learn how we can love. And in our education center where we teach our children that they are called to be disciples and what discipleship is all about. And that's why our Faith in the Future campaign is focused on those two buildings of our community. I'm going to ask you now to raise your hand, one person from each household, so the ushers can come forward and give you a pledge card. Please go ahead. Arm, hand, up. <laughs> even if you're already committed, even if you don't want to commit, just we want you to raise your hand and get a card. We mentioned last week, this is our second weekend of uh, commitment weekend for our campaign. And so far, our goal is $8 million. So far, we're at 6.9 million from 297 families. We have 4,800 families at Holy Family. We need everyone's participation because we're still a little over a million dollars short. So please keep your hand up till the ushers give you a card. We need some cards on this side, the ushers. So what we're focusing on is our church building. As you know, it's a 95 years old church building. And you said previously that you want to make sure this church keeps standing and open for the next 100 years, just like somebody built it for us. So we can continue to form disciples. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a new roof on the, on the church. We're going to open up the walls and put some mesh materials to give strength to the walls so that during an earthquake, the roof, all the walls would crumble down. We're going to fix the tower, put some, you know, strengthen the tower because those usually go down easier on the, you know, during an earthquake. And then on the entrances of the church, we have that beautiful artwork that's connected to the walls. We're going to make sure during an earthquake it doesn't fall down and block the exits of the church while people are in here. For our education center, it's 25 years old, you know, now, and we need to renovate the basement. A few years ago it was flooded. We need to kind of renovate and improve and modernize our science labs, our library, our meeting rooms, and create a wellness area for children to be able to sit down and reflect and be quiet and be with Jesus because that's part of being a disciple. And then we want to renovate our lobby, our entrance to the school and education center to be more welcoming to everyone. So 
thank you to all those who supported the Faith in Our Future campaign so far. Anybody still needs a card? Raise your hand. Okay, the ushers did a good job. In the front of the card, see on top it says, already pledged, pledge below, prayerfully considering, no pledge at this time. If you already pledged, again, thank you, just mark that, and maybe during the next two minutes, just pray that everyone will participate in this campaign. If you're prayerfully considering it, please take time to really pray about it during this week if you're not ready yet to fill out the pledge. Please start by filling out your contact information, write legibly and all the information, name, address, email, phone number. If you don't know your envelope number, don't worry about it. You don't have to. If you know it, put the envelope number and you don't have to worry about the other information as long as it's current. The good news, you don't have to give any money today. You don't have to give any money tomorrow or next Sunday or next month. You have till the end of this year, December 31st, 2023 to make your first pledge payment. And the other thing, keep in mind that your support of the campaign is in addition to your regular support to the parish, because obviously we need to continue the operations of the parish. Those columns of numbers, the last one is the amount you're pledging over five years. This is not a one-time gift. No parish can raise $8 million in one year. So the pledge is over five-year period. And the amounts here is the total for those five years. So if you want to pledge $12,000, the other columns tell you how much is that monthly or quarterly or semi-annually or annually. If you want to pledge a different amount, just put the number in the last column on the top so we can know you have a different amount. On the back of the card, there is the different payment methods. You can pay by credit card, check, automatic withdrawal, or online. If you want to pay by credit or debit cards, but you don't want to put your card numbers here, that's fine. Just check the credit card, and somebody from the staff office will call you to get that information. But we need you to sign on the line where it says signature for credit cards. Your signature is required. Again, like I said, the third line from the bottom is pledge start date, and you can start any time between now and December 31st, 2023, and then check how you want to contribute monthly, uh, uh, quarterly, annually, and then sign the bottom of the card. While finishing your cards, I want to share this story about become, being a missionary disciple. A friend of mine told me three weeks ago on a Monday morning, she was entering the elevator to go to her office, and she, as she turned around to press the button, she saw this man walking towards the elevator. He wasn't close enough, you know, but she decided to wait for him to get into the elevator. When he walked in, just being friendly, she goes, happy Monday. And without looking at her, he says, well, nothing's happy about it so far. Obviously, she wasn't like prepared for that answer. So she said, you know, well, I hope it gets better, you know. And then out of nowhere, she said to him, would you like me to pray for you? She's never done that before in her life. And the guy said, looked up and said, yes, please. And again, she doesn't know how the words came but she said, you know, a prayer for him. And as she was leaving the elevator, she said, God bless. And he looked at her and said, thank you very much. That meant a lot to me. It's simple ways that we can become missionary disciples. It's about bringing Christ into a situation where maybe there's darkness, person finding difficulty, person, person looking for direction. She doesn't know this person. She probably never see him again. She doesn't know what was troubling him. Just reminding him, as Christ told us today, I will be with you till the end of the age. That's how we become missionary disciples. That's what we're called to be. If you finish filling your card, please raise your card up so the ushers will come and collect the cards. Again, thank you. Even if you said, I already pledged or I don't want to pledge, 
give us your cards so we know where we are as we get towards the end of the campaign. Please continue to pray for the success of that campaign so we can continue our mission and grow as a community of missionary disciples here at Holy Family. Okay, we wanna collect as many cards as we passed out now. Don't hold on the card. Thank you very much and God bless. Albert, and I'm sure you'll all listen very carefully and you'll respond generously. While they're collecting the cards, I'll just take two or three minutes to mention something about the Ascension. The Ascension is a very important event in the apostolic life of the early church. One or two things about the Ascension. It's a departure ceremony. Jesus is leaving his disciples and they are despondent because he is leaving them. And he says, don't be anxious. I will send you the spirit. It has to do with separation. It has to do with change. Change can be very difficult for us and change happens in many ways. Change has many faces. Some radical change like death or sickness and infirmity. These are changes that are very obvious. Divorce sometimes is a radical change in a person's life. Um, there are many other ways in which change happens. Aging changes people. When I came to Holy Family, my hair was black and my, my face was fresh. Well, now look at me now. You know, this is what happens after 40 years here at Holy Family. Change happens. We tend to resist change. We're unsettled by change. We ain't what we used to be when you get older. That's change. How to embrace change and accept change. We have change in the church. We're praying for vocations throughout the world, and yet we are not getting vocations to the priesthood. It may well be that the future of the priesthood will not be exclusively male celibate persons. That's predictable in the future of the priesthood. So when we look at change, Jesus says, stay in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be empowered and you will be enlightened not to fear change because change happens to every one of us sometimes people resist retiring they can't handle change we need to bring change in our lives wherever it is into the prayer of the holy spirit about 40 or 50 years ago there was uh, an economist a very largely celebrated economist, and he was named Herbert Stein. And here's the final thought I'll leave with you. Herbert Stein is famous for what is now called Stein's Law. And he was speaking about the economy, but it, it applies to life. And Stein's Law is, if a thing cannot last forever, it will stop. We don't think about that. We think that this is going to go on and on. But Stein's law is worth considering. If a thing cannot last forever, it will stop. No matter what it is, we cling to things as if they won't stop. And when they stop, Jesus stay in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. When the Spirit comes upon you, you will be invincible. You will understand suffering in life. You will understand reversal. You will understand the judgment of others. You will understand rejection in the power of the Holy Spirit. When things stop, you will not become discouraged. That's the teaching of the Ascension here, where Jesus says, 
inherit the spirit and you will walk in peace. Amen. That's a three-minute reflection. <laughs> Please stand and we'll now pray.